Hey friends, how are you? It's Mr. McKinney here with Mr. McKinney's Historic Houston. We are live on the Heritage Society's Facebook page, of course. It is our, it's our weekly show that we do live from the Heritage Society with Mr. McKinney. Here we are, by the way, in front of the 1905 Sedai House. I'm going to talk about the history of, Joseph, of Henry Sedai in a second, but there it is. There's the home itself. You can look at the 1915 edition we're going to talk about as well, which is the sun porch you see over there that was added on later on. Let's take you a little bit closer. By the way, we are recording this live from the Heritage Society. We're doing it on Facebook Live and Instagram Live, so hopefully you're following us. Look at the city, by the way, the city skyline. I'll let you look up there, Real, kind of check it out right here in the heart. The park itself goes back to the year 1899. It was our first municipal park that we had here in Houston. I'm going to go and take my mask off so you can hear me a little better. Uh, but there it is, the bandstand. It's a replica bandstand of what used to be here. Uh, and Ginger Bernie, our, 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 our curator over here, does a great uh, talk about the history of Sam Houston Park. And in fact, one of our guests coming up too in a couple of weeks is going to talk about the history of the land that we're on right now. There is a little bit of a... Um, uh, some spirits in the space that are kind of keeping us in track. So you'll, you'll learn all about that when we talk to our uh, great friend, Mr. White, about the history of that. So once again, we're going to the uh, Henry Sedai house, and we're going to talk about this 1905 Westmoreland house. Let's first talk about the neighborhood itself, Westmoreland, which goes back once again to 1902. Uh, a fun fact, and it might be one of our test questions today, the neighborhood itself was built by a guy named um, uh, a Baldwin, a W.W. Baldwin, William Wright Baldwin, and he was a gentleman who created this neighborhood in 1902, and it was uh, Houston's first deed-restricted community at the time that it was built in 1902 in Houston's south end on the southern side of our city. It started a trend. If you notice, other neighborhoods would evolve. Uh, you have Avondale 1907. You've got Cortland Place 1906. Uh, Westmoreland 1902 was the first one. Also, he would have great success with Westmoreland, this beautiful neighborhood that he would go on to do Westmoreland Farms in 1908, uh, along with the city of Bel Air in 1908 as well. So like I said, you've got these neighborhoods, these two neighborhoods done by a guy named W.W. Baldwin, okay, William Wright Baldwin. So remember that name because it'll definitely come up a little bit later on. Um, I've got the pleasure of serving as the president for the Bel Air Historical Society, so we talk about Mr. Baldwin's legacy all the time, and it's really great to be able to connect the dots uh, with the house that's here to kind of see that. Now, Henry said I would purchase this house in 1905. He didn't build the house. Uh, it was considered to be a spec house at the time, but the Westmoreland addition was a really special part of Houston's past. In fact, it had a lot of amenities that we don't think about, uh, that we do think about nowadays just being kind of standard. So you'll learn about those as well as we talk to Joanne Zumbrum, who's our big special guest today. Joanne Zumbrum, you're going to love her because she actually remembers when this house was moved here. The house was brought here back in 1986, and it opens to the public after two years of being renovated, and then also, um, uh, you know, being uh, uh, furnished with great items that are, uh, really make this house special. So let's take you inside once again. Uh, you'll also see uh, the, the palm trees, too. And you, the gardens are really important. It's a really important part of this entire house were the gardens. And what we're doing now is we're going to take you around. You can look at all the amazing gardens that we have. Look at those palm trees up as well. Uh, and then you can check out the house also. So let's take you inside the gates over here. Now this house is available for tours and you're more than welcome to gather a family. We think about COVID being uh, an issue nowadays and that's, that's understandable of course, but you can still come out with small groups of like four people, maybe it's just your family, uh, you know, and come support the Heritage Society with one of these tours that we offer here. So think about that uh, if you're bored at home and you've been there for a while. If it's your family, it's a safe group. It makes sense to kind of come out and learn about Houston history, okay? All right, well, let's make our way. Look at this. It is Allison Bell, the director of the Heritage Society. Here she is. Say hello, Allison Bell. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the Heritage Society and the Stati House. Yeah, this is great. I think I'm really excited, just like you are, to be able to connect with Joanne Zumbrum. Uh, you know, we'll, of course, talk about her legacy a little bit, her bio a little bit later on, because we are very happy to have her, uh, you know, think about us. I mean, 36 plus years of caring about the Heritage Society. Oh, she's wonderful. Oh, she's, I a, know. she's a treasure, and we're lucky to have her on our board as well. Absolutely. So we'll discuss that in a second. So uh, here's the porch, and we're going to take you inside the actual Stedi house. So here we go. Come on in. Come on in. Right. Do us a favor, too. What we really like is we like engagements on social media. So I'll tell you this. If you are right now, if you've ever been inside the Stedi House, maybe hit the like button. Uh, if you'd like to go inside, uh, maybe hit, uh, hit the, the heart button. Uh, so show your love for the hair type. When, when you do, by the way, when you like and follow and you start clicking on different buttons, uh, the hearts, the, the thumbs up, that actually gets engagements that allows Facebook and Instagram to go out there and start the process of uh, you know, uh, the algorithm sharing the video more. So we do need that. 
that. So come on in. Here we go. Check out the house itself. Look at the house. And like I said, we're going to give you a really cool detailed look very shortly with our special guest. All right. So, Allison Bell, here we go. Well, let's just get started. I think, uh, how's our friends over on Instagram doing? A-okay? We like that. We like that. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for joining us on both our platforms. Um, like I said, we're going to uh, introduce you to, once again, our, our wonderful executive director, Allison Bell. She's going to kind of give us some uh, reports. And you see the prizes we have, by the way. Thank you so much to the folks that tune in to all of our shows here because we are really committed to bringing some type of content over these particular weeks of COVID, obviously, and months of COVID that we're dealing with now, to be able to have a little bit of Houston history in your homes or at your leisure is a good thing. So these are some items that we had, some prizes we won. So we're going to announce those winners shortly. But let's kind of um, jump right into the Stead Eye House itself. And with Allison Bell, she's going to talk about a couple things. So really quickly, talk about membership. People need to know about this, by the way. And we're doing this so more people can log on. So bear with us for a couple seconds. And we're also kind of uh, giving some, uh, some, uh, some um, excitement to our really special guest. Sure. So um, we love to have members. Oh, you want me to sure, this? It. Okay. We love members. We uh, just got a new one this past week. Um, that uh, joined and we are we have lots of diff George Slaughter just joined us last week uh, yesterday when yeah. he came to visit which was very nice um, our members have different we have different benefits for different levels everything from free uh, admission to our lectures and gift shop and tours to um, a quarterly news magazine that U of H produces so lots of different benefits so it's uh, always wonderful to get new members awesome Excellent. And this is George Slaughter, by the way, we mentioned earlier, and he is actually going to be our speaker about Spring Branch history. George Slaughter wrote the book about the history of Spring Branch back in 1991, and he's done this lecture a couple times uh, in the 90s uh, and in the early 2000s, but we haven't really had him back now so we're excited and you know most people don't know about the history of spring branch and the connection with the german community so part of the excitement is this is actually going to take place in the house we have next door yes. the 1868 san felipe cottage yes. so we're excited to be able to offer that offering coming up on september 9th make sure that you tune in to that particular uh, lecture we're going to have here hey talk about the big christmas in july sale. Oh, I know you're yes excited about yes this. we are offering all of our christmas merchandise at um up up to 50 percent off and we have a the items. Oh, okay. We have a few door prizes that we're going to have. So let me show you this really cute burlap stocking. Um, it's, a, it's a little less than a half off. We've got some really cute postcard, uh, little, what are they called? Greeting cards. Greeting cards. Longhorn with the little lights on his head, on those antlers. And then we've got a couple of just cute wooden um, ornaments that we have. And then, of course, what would be, would, would you like to have something from Texas, the little Texas ornament? So We'll be giving those away as door prizes later, so stay tuned. Yeah. And, but, um, and you can shop. You can uh, go to the Heritage Society website, and you can look under gift shop, and you'll see a tab that says Christmas in July. So we're going to try to keep this up till the end of July. So I hope you all um, can shop. We also have our suffrage exhibit up we have some merchandise from that you'll see it says suffrage merch um and you can um, shop for that which i don't know if we're going to talk about that tonight but it's on our website and it's really interesting because it's a wonderful exhibit that just opened um so then we have this wonderful volunteer who's been helping us with the uh, suffrage exhibit her name is lisa carey um, she and I have gotten to be good friends because we have to talk a lot, a lot of times a day because there's so much to get ready when an exhibit opens. So she's been wonderful helping us, volunteering much of her time, all of her time, and she's got a real job. So we're very thankful about that, too. She is an absolute gem. Lisa Curry, thank you so much for volunteering your time making it possible. Hey, the Tan Man says hi, by the way. He does. Oh, I love the in. Tan Man. Look hey, at that. Man. Phil Brayton, the Tan Man himself. <laughs> Hey, we also want to make sure that you like and follow our social media pages. This is really important to us. Uh, Facebook, again, you're probably watching us on Facebook Live. Maybe y'all are sharing this on Facebook Live right now, which we really appreciate. But, but our uh, communications director, Debbie, Debbie Duty, she produces these amazing, um, you know, uh, history tidbits. This is about Lydia Mendoza, by the way. So the famous, you know, musician, but guess what? She was a Houstonian. She spent her time here in Houston and calls it home. So great posts about Houston history are available on the Heritage Society's Facebook 
page. Please make sure that you like and follow this because this is how we grow the organization by spreading Houston history. Really, really important, okay? And also, by the way, our YouTube channel. We're launching new videos all the time. We only have 216 subscribers. We really, really need people to like our YouTube page. Now, what you what you might not – and look at these great videos, by the way, that we offer all the time. You're going to see great videos about Houston's past – on the Heritage Society's uh, YouTube channel page. Now, this matters to us because it's how we get out Houston history content, okay? And it's very easy. Look at these videos, videos on Houston history architecture, videos on Houston history tours here at the houses here, videos on African-American history, videos about the Nichols Rice Cherry House, and of course, all the back issues that we have of the Live with the Heritage Society with Mr. McKinney show is also on our YouTube page. And that means a lot to us. By the way, you might not realize this, if you actually have a Google account, you already have a YouTube page, okay? They are totally connected, okay? So think about that, okay? Yeah, and also while you're out there, go ahead and like and follow Mr. McKinney's Historic Houston and uh, the Houston History Bus. This is mean a lot to me, and that's also how you get a chance to, to see what we're doing uh, beforehand. We also offer free tours, by the way, on board the Houston History Bus, so we do ask that you consider following our page so you can get those free tours. So all the information is right there. It takes a couple seconds and means the world to uh, promoting Houston history for all of us. Hey, this just in, by the way, this just happened a couple of hours ago. I want you to know about this. This is Michael Bloodworth, who was our guest speaker that we had a couple of weeks ago, and he is Mr. Houston Aviation History. He is extremely knowledgeable when it comes to Houston's past, and Michael Bloodworth was wonderful because he did a lecture for us about Houston history, and he is doing an amazing master class. This is happening over at the 1940 Air Terminal Museum. If you've not been out to that amazing 1940 Joseph Finger Design Gem, we encourage you to go there. This is an example of the collaboration. Just the idea, you know, we're not really collaborating. We're more just promoting what they're doing in the historical community, which I know that Allison Bell agrees that's so important, right? Absolutely. To make sure that we do and That we all collaborate, yes, and share our, our all the knowledge we have about history. Yes. It's super important, okay? Because, you know, we don't cover aviation history at the Heritage Society. We allow other people to do that for us uh, in, in regards to spreading Houston history. And they do a wonderful job at the 1940 Air Terminal Museum Amy Rogers and her whole team over there. So the master class is happening on Saturday, August 22nd, and it's happening in this building over here. Once again, that beautiful 19 of 40 Joseph Finger Design Air Terminal. There it is. That's the inside of the building as well. And then, like I said, it's happening on November, uh, sorry, August 22nd at noon, from noon to three o'clock. You go to their Facebook page to sign up for it. And again, it's with Michael Bloodworth, the one and only. So this is just an example of what we're trying to do is spread Houston history. So learn more about that. Oh, this is great. So, yeah, you know, I wanted to thank uh, personally on the show um, Olga, uh, who did this wonderful mask. It's a little Mr. McKinney mask that she made. It matches my outfit today, uh, and I'll definitely wear it. I don't wear it when we do the show, so you can hear our audio, which is super important. But there's the mask. I just want to thank her for that. Little yeah, a little, little pocket square. She is so creative. Uh, and her and her daughter, Beatrice Chapa, who we've had on the radio show that I have on 90.1 FM, um, she came to the show. So I want to thank Olga Diaz, Beatrice Chapa, and their company is called For Serendipity, and they make custom masks. So thanks so much for doing that. was so kind of them. Maybe we'll have them in the gift shop. You never know. Hey, the fun time. It's prizes. It's time for some prizes. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is always for the folks that watch our shows. We are really, really appreciative for the folks that take time to watch these live shows that we're doing here at the Heritage Society. So Kimber Fountain was our guest speaker last time we met, and we talked about the history of Galveston. She did a wonderful job, and these prizes are available through, uh, through her. Um, so let's ask the first question that we had was, of course, about her first book, The Galveston Chronicles, and uh, The Red Light District, and The Maceo. So those are the books that we talked about. We're going to have her come back on the show and talk about these individual topics because some of the feedback that we got from everybody was that y'all wanted to hear more from Kimber Fountain. So we're going to have her back because she is wonderful. All right. The first question we had was, what year did the seawall start construction? And the answer is 1902. And the winner is Katie Wells. Look at that, Katie Wells. And do you want me to show the prize? Yeah, no, wait, okay. So the, the prize, the prize is the Galveston Seawall Conference. Oh, so yes, these that's are right. Our prizes. We're going to keep our prizes top secret for that you're going to win today. Oh, for later. Okay. Yes. Well, you're, you're going to know about them next week when we have our wonderful speaker, Will Howard, talk. So that's going to be a while. But I'll let you continue our wonderful oh, okay. executive director, Alex Bell. Okay. So once again, Kathy <laughs> Wells, great job. Way to go, Katie Wells. Way to go. Okay. Uh, the second one, is there a uh, Mr. McKinney, you want to roll the second? There we go. Um, why did girls come to work in the red light district? 
Do you remember when she talked about the red light district and, the, and her book about the red light district was just fascinating? And the answer is they had to pay for college. And our winner for that one, oh, ah, my friend Ethelyn, Ethelyn Caldell, you won a prize. Okay, hey, Ethelyn Caldell, Yay. Won a prize. let me talk about her. She's an amazing <laughs> realtor here in Houston. We adore her. But she's part of Houston history because her grandfather was Rudolph Cludell and her father was Bob Cludell. And he's the guy that started the neighborhood in the 1950s called Robindale, okay, named after her sister, Robin. Yeah. So that's so cool that she won. And, of course, being a realtor and being kind of part of Houston real estate royalty is amazing. So. Wait, I- tell you another fun fact she donated this wonderful rug will you point out when you go through from her grandparents right house in right the now? stati house okay, so she donated this rug right after i started working here and there's the beautiful um i picked it up from um, matt cameron and it was in her grandparents house and she just did not want to sell it she wanted it to go to some wonderful home and our curator ginger was looking for um, some new floor covering and hello ethelyn Way that to go. That is a great story. I didn't even know <laughs> oh. that. And see, you learn something new every time on the show. So thank you so much. Isn't that wonderful? Well, let's just keep it okay. going. I'll, I'll give you the mic. Sorry. Here we go. Let's see. Um, our third prize. Oh, the Maceo's. This was fascinating when she talked about it. The question is, what year was the Maceo Spice and Import Company founded? Because you remember how she talked about the granddaughter is running a spice company in Galveston. Um, and I could listen to her talk about the Maceo family uh, all night. So um, this is their their uh, website and their trademark. And let's see, what was the, um, for the spice bottle, the answer, 1944. And the winner, Mary Okrulik. I hope I said that right, Mary. Mary Okrulik, congratulations, because you're going to get these wonderful spices that um, that they've donated for you all. So thank you. Thank you all for participating. Keep watching. We have more prizes tonight. So don't, don't uh, wait till the very end. Don't tune us out. Oh, we got another one. What was the name, the nickname of the Conchetta Maceo's grandfather? Conchetta Maceo's grandfather. What so was his Conchetta nickname? Maceo's, I remember that. Oh, Seta, Conchetta, sorry. Conchetta Maceo's uh, grandfather he was related to, he was obviously the uncle of, uh, or the, the brothers rather, to the Maceo brothers, mm-hmm. okay? And we're going to talk about, uh, you win the spice bottle. Here it is. And she autographed this, by the way. Stay spicy, she says. That's Concetta Maceo, exactly. Southern Seasoning. Concetta Maceo, she is wonderful. She's probably tuning in right now. And this is, look at this one. This is called uh, Concetta Q Barbecue Rub. So how about that? So, and these, again, it's so wonderful to have these prizes for y'all. Okay, I'll give you mine. The, the answer is slick, and the winner is Beverly Pryor. So congratulations, Beverly. Thank you all for playing, too. And then do we have – oh, we have another one. What was the name of the first Maceo luxury gambling establishment? Let's see what that – and there's a photo of it, from the, and it's from the book. And you win the book. This is the book now. Oh, this is the door prize. Yeah, yes. The door prize is the actual book. Awesome. And the – Answer is Hollywood Dinner Club, and Beverly won that one, too. Oh, my gosh, Beverly, you're raking it in. She gets two prizes, two prizes for Beverly. All right. So thank you again to uh, Galveston historian, Kimber Fountain, author. All these books are available on her uh, on her particular site. You have to go to her page. You can find her on Facebook at author Kimber Fountain. But again, another example of us promoting Houston history and getting the word out. She's a wonderful speaker, and we're so excited that she cares about local history to promote it, right? Um, hey, speaking of local history, Will Howard is going to be joining us, and he's going to be talking about the history of Bagby Street. He's going to take you on a journey from 1837 to present day. And not even that, he's actually going to take us into the future, right, Allison? Yeah. Talk about some of the exciting things that are happening on Bagby since you're oh, kind of sure. in the middle of it now. <laughs> yes. so first off, what's happening now? Right now, the Bagby Street is completely being renovated, um, torn up, lots of digging in, right in front of our building. Um, but from the old Barbara Jordan Post Office all the way down to the Dallas Clay intersection, they are re vitalizing Bagby. They're making it more pedestrian and bike friendly. Um, the, there'll be a fewer car lanes and bigger um, bike lanes. They're putting a beautiful wooden deck um, right outside of Sam Houston Park, which we're very excited about. Um, so that is going to bring a lot of vitalization. Like more people will come visit, a lot of uh, traffic when everyone comes to work back downtown. So we're very excited about that. 
You know, and Will Howard and I serve on the board of the Harris County Historical Commission together, so he is so knowledgeable when it comes to Texas history and Houston history. You do not want to miss out on this lecture because he's going to take you, like I said, all the way back to 1837. Also joining us, and she's really, really involved in the Heritage Society, Ann Sloan. We've got Ann Sloan coming on the show. She's going to be on the show with us on August 12th, Wednesday, August 12th. She's going to talk about the Women's History Exhibit that is available for, for looking at right now. You can go check out the exhibit at the Heritage Society, uh, and it's happening now until the end of March, March of 2021. Yes. you got plenty of time, but you'll get a sneak peek with her on August 12th, so we're looking forward to that. Speaking of sneak peeks and real peeks, we've got with you the house that you're looking at right now. These are some photos that we're going to take you through. We're going to show you some really cool then and now photos of the space, okay? So really, and just I can't, I can't express it enough how excited we are to have this very special guest. So this is it, guys. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. Oh, there she is. Good evening. I got to tell you, it's really great to have that poor cochere out there on a rainy evening like that. It really saves the hairdo and everything else. <laughs> hey, Houston, here she is, Joanne Zumbrum, our board member extraordinaire. She, by the way, is on the collections committee. She's the chair for the collections committee. She's also our finance committee chair. And you have a 36-year relationship with the Heritage Society? Yes, I do. Yes. Wow. And with this house itself, she has a lot of great information about this historic home, which she's going to share with us tonight. So I'm looking forward to this. In fact, this is probably what you talked about earlier. This is probably how you came in. I'll zoom in this photo well, over here. Well, I didn't have quite that fancy car. That is, that is a Mormon, that, and that is what Mr. Stad I drove. I just had uh, kind of a basic Model T. <laughs> Oh, a basic Model T. Well, there it is. And, you know, the lavish garage, uh, we think, was done about 1915. And we're going to talk about You'll be able to see where the house had the different editions over the years. But most famously was the 1915 edition that was done about 10 years later by a well, very well-known architect. Might even be a test question for tonight. Who knows? A prize question. Alfred C. Finn. You know the name Alfred C. Finn because you know Houston history and you love it. And, you know, the beautiful 1929 Gulf Building. You know all the hotels, the Loire Hotel, for example. These are all legacies that are part of Alfred C. Finn, which we'll talk about. Well, let's not waste any more time. Well, let's, let's let's show that picture again. Oh, sure. Wanna, now that you mentioned the oh yes, and the addition that is the uh, garage that was behind the house, and above it was an apartment. And the Stadis had uh, a couple that lived here and helped out with things: a, a cook and a gentleman. They were married, and they lived above the garage. Wow, I love that. I love the fact. And they also purchased a lot, uh, two lots, I believe, next door to their house, which is we're going to look at a replica of the gardens they had, which were just maintained and really a center point for gathering at this hot southern season. So let's just do this. Let's take you around the house. So you're going to follow us real quick. And let me show you a really neat photo, first and foremost, that is going to bring us back. Look at these old photos that are part of the Heritage Society's collection. And I think what Joanne loves to mention is there's only really – one piece of furniture that is original to this photo. What is it? Well, it's that center table. And one of the things that was so special about redoing this house is we had all these wonderful photographs so we could really see how the rooms looked at the at the time the Stadis lived here. And uh, so we were able to rec recreate that. Uh, we even did research on the drapery materials, and while we maybe couldn't find exact, we could come very, very close to that. We also, what was so great, was that we had uh, so many of the original furnishings donated to us. So that's very special. And this center table was one of those pieces that was donated by the family. This is great. So also talk about, well, and if, if you're wondering what Odell and Stan, uh, Henry said I look like, look at these portraits, by the way. Uh, the photo collection you mentioned earlier, these very detailed photos were probably because they obviously had means, and they were, they were able to do a really detailed uh, documentation of their home, and, you know, photographs were really important to them. So, but look at these portraits, though. And that is Odelia and Henry. There they are. And now this piano let's, I know you yes. love. Well, let's stop by the piano for a minute because Mrs. Stadi, before she was married, taught music. And her love of music carried through her whole life. And she would play often, so right up until her death. Look at that. And really great portraits. And I'll, I'll zoom in when we go into the next room. Uh, Y'all can look at those photos over there. Uh, I'll show you this photo here. So talk about this room that we're in, uh, about to go into right now. 
Well, this room, again, is special because we do have so many original furnishings in here. The wicker. Wicker became very popular in the late 1800s and continued into the 1900s. It was lightweight. It could be, it was relatively inexpensive for the period and just kind of the perfect item for a sunroom and the sun all the sunrooms in here were added by by uh when the addition was added in 1915. wow and this would have been so neat to be able to relax and just, now i also know that it used to be screened in but then they end up getting something really special and they have to close it in with windows they get air conditioning right Oh, that was way down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I hear, which is wonderful to be able to have that luxury, right? Uh, so let's keep going through the house. But you but you noticed the wicker furniture, and I just love the way that y'all restored this. Now, you were part of the Heritage Society when they found, when they actually rescued this house, rather, or were able to remove the house here. And what year was that? They moved it here in a excuse me 1986 and they split it in half and they moved it on a Sunday morning because the traffic was less they had to close down the freeway in order to bring it in here and they great big on truck beds brought it in put it and put it back together I mean there's this great photo if you know Tosh uh, Poino the, the the wonderful uh you know humorist he there's a photo of the house cut right down the middle and on the freeway so that's pretty special that you, I mean, just being in traffic in the early Sunday morning, maybe you're doing some, some type of job that requires that you see a half a house come down the freeway. But that's pretty typical, moving them at that particular oh, time. Oh, yes, because you, you had to stop traffic. So yeah. you didn't want too many people to be angry. And we were all down here. I mean, it was early morning, 6 a.m. We had had candlelight. We're up, the, you know, wrapping up candlelight the night before. But we were here with our coffee and our donuts so we could watch it come in. I love that. So it was a gathering. It was a happening. How cool is that? Well, let's keep taking us through this wonderful house. Now, we're back in the same room we are at earlier. Let's yeah. maybe talk about just the fireplace and just anything else in this well, room. Well, there are not too many fireplaces in the house because uh, this they had central heating. So, But this is one of the original fireplaces in, in the uh, house. Wow. And I want I want the cameras to focus on these photos we have okay, over here. About yeah, the, the, the family itself. Now, well, there seems to be a lot of ladies in these photos. There are. Uh, Odelia had five sisters. So this is her with her five sisters, the, the mother. I don't know who the other person is in that photo, but this photo kind of indicates to you just the about a lot about the family. They were there, there was a great love in this family, and this house was the center for so many events. There were wedding showers. There were even two, two family weddings in here. They were always together at Christmas, and it was always beautifully decorated. But they, and as we go through here, we'll hear a little more about just how important family was in their lives. Now, and then also, too, this might, might even be a test question. <laughs> how many kids did they have? Well, they did not have any children of their own, but there were lots of nieces and nephews. And they used to come and play marbles in this entryway, and then some of the neighborhood kids would come over and join them, and they loved to come here because the Stad Ice always had ice cream for the kids. So. I love that. And look at the bookcases, by the way. You'll see the books. Why were there so many books in this house? Mr. Sadai was an avid reader, right? Is somebody who enjoyed that? Well, yes. So, and those are those are part of the addition, and that the chevron pattern you should see on there is very indicative of the Alfred Finn I designs. I love that. That is awesome. Let's just keep going throughout the house. Follow us over here now. For for. Maybe people a little younger. What is this device here? Well, this is a, a, a Victrola, so that you could uh, play play music and dance if you wanted to. And I understand the Stad Eyes did it, it play a lot of music, and they did dance. So where do they put the CDs? Uh, no, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. And they had bottled water. Come on in. Let's see. Oh, hey, look at this. Oh, I love this. Once again, a little then and now photo. Here we go. So again, you can see how we could replicate the room so well. And it was especially made easier because we had the original table and chairs that belonged to the stat eyes, as you saw in the picture. We also had the original sideboard that belonged to the, the stat eyes. And you saw, saw that in the picture also. A particular note in this room is all the woodwork. And there was an article written in one of the magazines of the time that uh, talked 
talked about how beautiful the woodwork was in this house. And you could see it in the, the plate rail up there where you could just uh, display plates. And then over here where you see this wonderful curved window and then you see the inlay wood around that. And it really, I think it's a beautiful effect. Wow, and that, that's a big deal to be written up in a national magazine at the time. I mean, people must have heard about, you know, the type of work that goes into these homes. But I hope you can absorb all of this. And now look at this. What, I guess we're set. We're ready to go yeah, for our little dinner party. Ready for dinner. I, it's dinner time. We're getting hungry. This is one of my favorite things about <laughs> visiting these house museums all throughout Texas. As a young person, I would love to <laughs> the, kind of just the fake food. play with the fake It's food. quite an art. It, yeah, it is an art. Yeah. It's so realistic. I just think it's wonderful to be able to have it out there. This is a great place to bring young people because they can learn about the different time periods of Houston's and Texas and even U.S. history because here we are. A moment in time is frozen in this house, and it's because of the great work of docents and volunteers that make it as realistic as possible. Well, and this is so important because oil and the oil business was so important in this area and so important to Houston's growth. And we could tell this, the beginning story of that here. I also do want to mention while we're in here the, the golden oak furniture because that was another type, type of uh, furniture you saw in this period, you know, made of oak and very, very popular. Wow, well, let's make our way into the uh, kitchen over here. Let's just see where all the magic happened, right? Let's check it out. Look at this. Well, we're going to take a, take a little stop here in the, in the butler's pantry first. Yes, we can stop in the butler's pantry. I want folks to get a really good photo of this. This is an old historic photo of what it looked like at the time. There it is. Hopefully you all got that. Okay, I'll put that down right there. And then here it is now. Look, same ice. Look at that. ice box. Need the, need the microphone so you can hear me. Uh, this particular ice box is really upscale because they didn't have to bring the blocks of ice into the house. And the ice was always packed in straw so that it would, would have been really kind of messy to have somebody tracking that straw through, straw through your house. So from in this one, it could actually be loaded from the outside. So you never had that mess. And let's see, there, there is an intercom well, system. Well, there's a couple things. One, I yeah. mean, I think well, people need to, buttons, yeah. I mean, this is, and, it, and they work, by the way, which is really wonderful for, I think, people to be able to see that happen, but just to be able to have electricity, obviously, at the time. Now, I love this, because this also seems like with this cable over here was, you know, but remember these? I mean, I've got fond memories. I, I was going to say, you have a, you have memories of well, your, grandma, your grandmother? I, I used to love going to her house and playing with these little sweeper devices, and it was just so much fun. And she was like, well, bring them over every weekend yeah. because that's a big deal. Well, let's go into the kitchen. I want to show you. I'll let Joanne here take the mic, and I'll let you uh, kind of talk to us about the kitchen. But here's a quick photo of the kitchen as it looked back in about 1915, and then we're going to take it away. You can see it's wonderful. I mean, a lot is still here. Talk yes. to the kitchen itself. Well, this area uh, is pretty is pretty much there. Uh, we have the stove. It's not the original stove, but it's very close. If you look at the picture and compare, you can see that it's pretty much the same model. Of course, then we do have the, this particular area where uh, we would have and our for, utensils. And preparing a meal was a lot of work back then. Oh, yeah. And then we, yeah, a lot of people wonder what this item is. And, of course, it's a grinder. Mm -hmm. So you can, gr you know, nowadays we have a food processor to gr grind up things. But back in those days, you had the old fashion grinder. Um, a, a lot of people have asked about these milk bottles. Oh, we'll check it out. So, you know what, right now, we, we talked earlier about the importance of social media engagements. Right now, give us a like, a thumb button on, on your, or a heart on your Instagram if you know what this is. If you remember, actually, there are still Houstonians out there that remember getting their milk delivered to their doorstep in either six little of those little quarts or in larger ones like this. But let's talk about this. So this, this looks a little bit odd. Is, is this out of place, we think? It is. Actually, now, you got it delivered, and a lot of people had boxes, metal boxes that were insulated on the front porch or their porch where the milkman would leave it. But uh, these are not really appropriate for this particular era because it was not until the 1940s that they started using the square bottles. And one of the reasons that they were considered more practical, they fit into the square boxes better. Prior to that, they used uh, round bottles. So, so if it's 1915 or 1920 or 1930, you're going to see round milk bottles, not the square ones. So that might be a test question for y'all for a prize is what is wrong with this particular milk bottle in this 
this 1905 uh, you know, house. So, you know, we do the best we can to keep it right. I mean, I think for the most part, as you mentioned earlier, things look really good, but there's a couple of little tidbits here and there. If you really know your Houston history or your overall history, you'll kind of know about that. But guess, give us a like if you remember actually getting milk bottles delivered to your house. We want to see those likes because those likes make a big difference. Isaac, how are we doing those likes? They're coming in. Okay, good. We got a lot of, so we got some on Instagram. Thank yeah, you, Instagram. You and, yeah. and what's really cool is there is a back staircase so that the cook can prepare breakfast and take it up to people in the rooms. And there is an intercom system in this house. so that if We'll you find want, it. It's yeah, hidden someplace. If, if, if you want something to eat, you just you know, let the cook know what you want, and she can bring it up to you. I love that. So we're going to let we're gonna go this way while y'all walk around the kitchen. I'm going to let the cameras get a real good glimpse of the kitchen. Here we have some... You know, some, some uh, artichoke and vegetables. And, and the, yeah, squash and carrots. And Super herbs, important. Herbs. So, <laughs> all right. Let's, well, let's make our way upstairs. Let's kind of learn about the upstairs of the house. Yeah, I'll let ladies first. I'll let you, you go, go first. Go. Oh, uh, actually, you're right. <laughs> we ought to go outside. <laughs> what, 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 I'm park. jumping the gun. We're going to see the yeah. sun porch. Oh, Joanne, look at this. Okay, what? so. Oh, the, the toaster. Yeah, can y'all guess? Can y'all guess what this is? I if you, just if told you heard, well, I if, you heard, if you heard earlier, isn't that great? Look at that wonderful little items here throughout the house. Now, we're gonna find the intercom system. We know it's. We need Ginger Bernie here, our awesome our collections curator. So this is a photo of this room. Now, tell us where we're at now. Okay, this is a addition that it's kind of a. It's a basically for breakfast. Again, light, airy. The Statis loved gardening. They would import uh, plants from around the world. They had gorgeous gardens, but they would eat here in the morning, and you can't see out there right now, but there is, if you look that way, there is a rose garden, and they could gaze out at the rose garden while they ate. We do have the bird cages. I, I actually had a friend who knew the Mrs. Stadi, and she she loved her birds. She loved her birds. Here's so. some early photos of what the gardens. We're going to go outside in a second to kind of show you the gardens, but I want you to see these photos here inside of what it looked like, and that was a big deal to have something this impressive in their Westmoreland home. So. Oh, you there do have is. the pig, and there you can see them out in the tea house. Ha yeah, that. just having a party out there. They they have big Fourth of July parties every year, and Miss, Mr. Stad, I would have fireworks and just kind of organize the whole neighborhood. There we go. Let's take you outside real quick. The camera might get a little foggy. Hopefully, it won't. Scare away. Oh, uh, we scared so. away the kitty cats. <laughs> uh, but here we are, and this is—I mean, look, look up and look around, y'all. I mean, obviously now a little different. We're in the heart of downtown Houston, so it's a little different than down the street over in Westmoreland. Uh, but this is really special, you know, just to be able to have, you know, a wedding. And there are parts of the heritage site that you can rent out uh, just for different events. Uh, but I just think to be able to have kind of, you know, a gathering out here is really something special, uh, you know, and it's just really neat. So you remember when they when they did this, when they kind of set up the garden space out here? and made That was later. We originally had a, a rose garden over in front of the Nichols Rice Cherry House, but that was not getting enough sun because of all the beautiful big oak tree over over there. So we moved the uh, rose garden over, over here. Oh, so we we'll so put that in. And then we also, over the years, we've had different volunteers help with gardening, and we do have another uh, garden back there. And with this is some a native. replica of what was originally yes, there, correct? Yes. Because obviously it was demolished. Maybe they brought portions of it. Do they, we know? Yeah, they brought this. They oh, brought look at this. That. Yeah, so you're they brought see this. this original yeah. to the home itself. We didn't bring all the outbuildings because there were just too many. But we did. We did bring the, this from the yeah. from the original one. One thing I want to mention while we're out here is the fact that the Stat Eyes had one of the first underground water irrigation systems in the area. So again, that was quite upscale. <laughs> look at that. You see, having an irrigation system right there in your home. Well, let's go this way. We're going to go back inside the house. And then one of my favorite parts is the sleeping quarters on the second floor. You'll be able to see where the sad eyes slept and where they had their guests also come join them for an evening. So this is really exciting. And there were lots of people in that house. We oh, talked yes. About earlier. Oh, yes. Family was always visiting. And when we get up there, I'm going to yeah, I'll, we'll I'll have some little, little tidbits. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to stop here. Let our I was going to say, uh, one thing we didn't mention when we were in here is the phone systems that were 
of the period. Sure. So I don't know if any of you remember this candlestick style style phone or not. So, but that that was. Oh, I bet you had a little princess phone, right back in the day. <laughs> oh, that even dated before the princess phone. Look at that! Come on in. So, like I said, we're going to take you upstairs now to the second floor. And I, as we go up the stairs, all ladies first, I'll let you go up first. I want you to check out, again, the woodwork that Joanne mentioned earlier. It's just all throughout the entire house. And it really speaks to the, the style and taste of the Sedai family. Uh, you'll also be able to see the staircase we have over here, which is going to be on your right-hand side if you're looking. You're left over there. That's where, again, the staff would come down to serve the meals. Uh, and very generous staircase, by the way. Nice large staircase for people to enjoy. So we will now take you into this first bedroom over here. And I'll let Joanne take the mic real quick. There you go, while I show some photos. So here we have some early photos of the room itself. Even though the stat eyes were fairly well to do, they, they really furnished things fairly simply. A uh, lot of iron beds and uh, brass beds, again, an original bed from that from that particular period. Take so shall we room. shall we go yeah, on through to the sli yeah the the sleeping porches sleeping and porch. so so many Houstonians remember sleeping porches uh, because before in the days before air conditioning it was hot in in your house. And if you had a sleeping porch in the summertime, you could move out there and you got wonderful breezes and everything from, from both sides and it was a whole lot more comfortable. So now, are we gonna go through that way so we can just, uh, go out I this way? I think we go this way over here. Yeah, I'll, I'll let, uh, here we go. We'll just keep going okay. straight. When, when they um, remodeled the house, they added a second bathroom. I mean, th and this is definitely upscale. So this is, this is the second bathroom. And you can kind of get a feeling um, of the fact that it was an addition because uh, the hallway, you can see the chimney from downstairs makes it difficult to have a full hallway out into the main room. But still, it was nice for the two bedrooms on either side to have, have uh, a room like this that, that was close. So should we go to the other yes, other? Going. So in the, this this again is another another bedroom with a beautiful sleeping porch. So and again, none, none of the there. furniture here is original. No, none families. of this is original. I, I will try to remember to point out all the original furniture. So, yeah. but we can walk out here. And I believe you have a picture yes. of the so original. So we have a photo here of what it looked like in the early days. There's a photo from the collection of uh, the Heritage Society. These are their amazing photos they have. Again, the Sedai family took the time. We know we have new folks that are jumping on uh, the Instagram and Facebook feed all the time. So there we go. And what you'll notice, too, is you'll notice that there are no windows. And the reason why there are no windows is because they were added later much later. So this is when it was an actual sleeping porch with the screened in windows. But of course, when they get AC, they decide to add the windows a little bit and later And again, on. we have the, the iron beds, okay, so, which were that. popular. Yeah. So if we step through the hallway, we can look at the original bathroom. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, let's show, let's show uh, real quick oh. the cameras. Let me show you this. This is kind of neat. I think this is wonderful. I'll let you all sit on that side while we open the door. Look at this. It's a little nice messy. Cedar closet. A nice cedar closet. Now um, we do. And store. That's a full cedar closet. I mean, from top to bottom. We do. Finish. We do store some things in there that are seasonal. That when we decorate for Christmas, we'll go in, into our stash. You know, everybody's got a closet like that at home with a bunch of stuff in there. Well, let's keep. <laughs> I'm almost out. embarrassed for you to see it. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I'll let you lead the way. Here we go. Oh, for the folks at home, tell them what this is. It's got a foot pedal. <laughs> I guess, what does it drive? I guess I remember it so well from my grandmother that I don't even think of it as unique. But yes, it's a sewing machine with a foot pedal. And I remember one time when I was, uh, yeah, I guess I was a teenager, my, my mother decided to make some curtains for my grandmother, and the only sewing machine was a treadle one. And yeah, she was a little apprehensive, but actually when she started using it, she said it actually worked better than her electric machine. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in, look at that. So, so we'll show you the bathroom, yeah. Walk through here. We can walk through a little bit. We're going to go around that way, though. Actually, we'll yeah. let the cameras go in. 
say this. But you can still me. talk about it. So I'll give you the microphone, and you'll sit over here. And this There's is my... not a, just a whole lot to say about this. I mean, it, it's the original bathroom to the house. It does have the claw foot uh, tub, which would have been so popular at that time, the main thing. So, you know, the little hexagon tiles that people are again using, they've re rediscovered them. Uh, as we go through this, we're going to see some kind of interesting little things. For one thing, that has access to the porch, and then when we go in the next room, we'll see another access point for this. There we go. Okay, so this... This has got to be an important room. I want to show you an old photograph, by the way. We like to show these collection at the Heritage Society, these Gossam photos. Look at what we're looking at right there. I'll let Isaac turn the light on to focus on that. How about that? So look at the room, and then look at the woodwork, and look at all the custom cabinetry on your left-hand side dresser. Isn't that wonderful? Well, open that. The, and this, this, of course, would course would have been Henry and Odelia's room and we have beautiful uh, built-in closets cupboards we also have an access to the bathroom so that they had their privacy that way so um, we also on the dresser table we have the uh, bake light uh, dre dresser accessories and that was really kind of one of the first plastics that was made and it was very popular at the yeah yeah well I don't know I don't even know what that the green not, the not, green not this plastic. the this green plastic here. yes that plastic there that plastic yes. there forget the alarm right there that plastic okay how about that I love it I love it you never know what you'll get on the you board. never know I'm telling you travel in time okay so talk about this room because this is right by the master bedroom. This has right. got to be a private space, and this well, is really special. It it was, but I also, uh, in doing some of my reading, it was also a gathering place for Makes some of the sense. family. You know, what a great place to come and have tea. Uh, we even know that they had uh, cushions that had the app those are not quite apple blossoms with the pink flowers on them. So, but I just think this is great. It's very unique. You also had access to the bathroom. From oh my here. gosh, a private window. So, and let me show you some then and now photos you because have we to, like okay, to do that. Okay, so you have some I'm of those. Let me hold that. But here's some great photos once again from the scrapbook of the Sedai family. There it is, which we love to show people because they learn about Houston history through old photos that we have here at the Heritage Society. There's also wonderful old photos over at the. Um, the HMRC and also the Rice Woodson Library. So great historic photos all throughout Houston. And you can actually gather because they're part of the public domain. You don't have to pay for these in some cases. You can certainly use them for that. But look at this. This is what this room would have looked like back around 1915 when they got these photos made. So how wonderful is that? I want to show people this right here. So we more of our, more of our secrets. More of the secrets. But look at this. So we. This is not 1915, by the way, but look at Gillies over here. You guys remember the Pasadena hotspot? There it is, Urban Cowboy fame, of course, before that and even after. There he is. And then look at these items we found in here. Allison Bell had some great memories. Uh, of course, she's a Lamar alumni, but this is from the Lamar Hotel, the beautiful 1926 Lamar Hotel that was built by uh, Jesse H. Jones, but more importantly, the architect was Alfred C. Finn, the guy that uh, did this actual addition because this was part of the new addition that he did. And then y'all, many of y'all remember the Shamrock Hilton, the old Shamrock Hilton Hotel, originally the Shamrock Hotel 1949 and then later more than the uh, Shamrock Hilton in 1954 so there it is uh, just some fun treasures as we were doing our walkthrough originally we stumbled upon that and we're like we got to show people how great is that well let's keep going okay so we'll get back it always fa always fascinated me how these rooms were interconnected like they are I'm, yeah I don't know yeah, if that was I, yeah I don't, I don't know if that was the style or, or what I, but yeah you know, they are now this room uh, was Odelia's sister Leah's room Leah was married to one of Henry's brothers Grover uh, they were both lived here while they were waiting for their house to be finished and unfortunately Grover passed away of the uh, Spanish influenza pandemic. Leah continued to live here even after her husband passed away and in fact she lived in the house she was 104 years old when she passed away wow. and that was in the 19 I think 1980 January 1st 1980 Look so and Odelia had passed away in 1954 so so I guess in a lot of ways this is just a very special room 
So there's the original of the room. Uh, not quite the same bed, bed and you we can have. See but the, the, the built but in again, how built how lovely it, how lovely it is. So. One of a, one of Adelia's other sister, Colleen, also lived here when when she became a widow. So, uh, not quite for the, the same length of time as Leah. So, oh, okay. Right. So, are we going. ready? Are we ready to see the well, the secret place? We are. There's a couple secrets. So, first off, we want to show you this photo. Uh, oh, look! Look at the hallway. By the way, I want to talk talk about this. Oh, I did when I was in the in the bathroom. Well, the the, you can get another in. view another view of it because it was an addition. You know, I don't if any of you have had your house remodeled. Sometimes you have to make accommodations because to tear out a chimney would have been very difficult. <laughs> I love that. And look at this photo, by the way. This is what you're looking at right now, which is this particular staircase. And we're going to take you up the staircase. I'm going to let you take us up the staircase okay. real quick. Well, I'm going to stop part way up. Okay. So, uh, well, we're going to stop twice. Sure. So, because this is. We got the photo upstairs. Oh, we have one upstairs? Yeah, okay. Sure. But I do want to mention that. So, there's some artwork that oh. we want to mention. So, I will let. Is it artwork? Well, it is. Yes, but I, the, the, the one I wanted to talk about was down downstairs, and I forgot. Um, but I do want to mention Emma's. Emma's Emma Richardson Cherry, who lived in the Nichols Rice Cherry House, was friends with the Stadi, and because of the gardens and everything, she would come over here to paint. So some of some of the some of the pictures of the flowers you see are, are so actually not hers. Not over there, but some of the so photos. The, some of the others. Yes, that are there. So anyhow, so up here, and you're going to get that photo and show us show us what it was like initially. So, so talk about this device because this was kind of rare to have yeah. this not only on a third floor but in this house talk about this well we found out when when the architects came and were doing things to uh, to get this house put back together that the pool table actually w w would have put a strain on the structure and they were lucky that the house, that the roof didn't fall in so but anyhow this was Henry's man, man cave of the 1950s so I but I think it would be a, such a wonderful place to I love it and look at that little nook area too I just want you to explore the upstairs area you're more than welcome to walk around we're getting close to the end of our program uh, we've got some great questions that we're going to ask and hopefully you can answer those questions if you saw this uh, video about the set I house itself. Um, talk about these big trunks though. Well, ladies when they traveled always had gloves, hats, shoes, and a dress to match. So if they were going even on a relatively short trip, they needed big trunks to travel. So you can see, we, and you would have stored that up in your attic. I love that. Look at that. And like I said, making this into a space that, uh, you know, Henry said I could enjoy, could entertain people. This has got partners up here. All that. Well, you know, it's and, and it's time to toast, right? Let, let's go yes. ahead and do that real quick. Are we going to have a toast? Well, why not? I think it's <laughs> appropriate. We'll have you on this side over here, Joanne. Okay. And then we, we have with us again Allison Erzbell with the Heritage hey. Society. Hello. 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 How was your tour? Did everyone enjoy it? Did I, we told you she knew everything about the house. It was, you know, it was, it was a great tour. Do, and, do and we I, cover everything y'all want to know? Well, are there any questions that there, so there were some great comments about uh, the, the bed and furniture being donated by families here in Houston mm -hmm. over the years. There's certainly too many families to mention, but if your family donated an item to the Heritage Society over the years, we certainly appreciate it. Uh, things like this that are donated over the years make a big difference in regards to being able to tell the story about Houston in a very special way. So many of y'all got a chance to walk through the house with us a couple seconds ago, and you really understood why it matters to have these house museum homes around. Any, any Before we toast and have some questions, any kind of uh, words for the, the, uh, the audience out there why the Heritage Society matters? Well, it matters because we need to look at our history in order to understand where we are now, and also to map a course for the f future. And I think that with the Heritage Society, you can see a microcosm of the years of Houston history. And I, I think that that's very important. Now, I didn't mention this when we were downstairs, but I guess, I'll, should I do the honors and explain yeah, sure. why, why we're toasting with Do Dr. Pepper? Odelia and her sisters are from Waco. Texas, and of course, Waco, Texas, was the home of Dr. Pepper. So we decided that that would be appropriate for a toast. <laughs> Look at that. 
Well, we are going to toast, and we're going to just, uh, here, we'll just clink our glasses, and we'll get to it later on, to the Heritage Society and to all of y'all for joining us. We have some questions, though. Let's go ahead and ask those wonderful questions that we have. So I guess the first question I'll ask for the folks that are chiming in, this is your chance to go ahead and answer these questions. And like we said, we have some really great prizes that we have to offer y'all. So real quick, uh, the first question we'll ask was, who was the founder and the developer for the Westmoreland neighborhood back in 1902? What's his name? You could, there's a variety of answers you can give us. You can give us his full name or just his initials with his last name. But he was a very well-known gentleman. He also went out there to start um, this uh, other neighborhood uh, in uh, Bel Air in 1908. So that kind of gives a lot of information if you forgot it or if you just joined us last minute. So if you're chiming in now, and Isaac will give me a thumbs up if people are chiming in. Alana will, too, our wonderful assistants here. Let us know, Isaac, when people start chiming in the answer. How about a second question for the folks out there. What was the name of the person Leah was married to and what was her what was his relationship to Henry and how did he pass away? Lots and lots of questions. That's three. Okay, yeah. that's three. So we're going to make it very simple. I'm going to simple it down. We're going to say, can you give us this name? What's the name? And it's, it's kind of a, a, a well-known name if you think about it. Uh, there was a couple of presidents, or at least one, that had the name. So there you go. There's a clue for you all in case you join us last minute. So what's the name of, and again, the question again. Hen Henry Stadeye's brother that was married to Leah, Odelia's sister. Okay, so you heard it there. That's the question. We're going to give you the an you're going to give us the answer, and hopefully you'll win some prizes. Okay, we're getting some engagements there. That's wonderful. All right. Any, any questions you want to ask the group, Allison Bell? Maybe for the uh, the Sedai House in general. Um, did you all talk about the um, milk bottle? Yeah, you can ask that question. Okay, so we found <laughs> Joanne and her keen eye um, pointed out that. What, uh, let's see, the milk bottle that you saw in the kitchen. So why is it wrong? Why is it in the wrong, why is it, why should it not be in this house? Where, sh what year should it be? What was it from? Okay, so I'll simple the question down too is, really, why is the bottle, why is the milk bottle that, that, that Joanne spoke about in the kitchen, why is it out of place or why does it not belong, okay? Those are three questions. Joanne, I'll let you ask a fourth question real quick. Anything else you think the audience should know? What was the name of the architect who was instrumental in the remodeling in 1915? That's a great question because we talked about the architect numerous times. He's a very important Houston architect. His name, you will remember if you've ever visited the San Jacinto Monument or if you've ever been out to Sackowitz in the early days before their 1951 you know, uh, new building. So I guess that's nobody, right? <laughs> <laughs> nobody remembers the 1929 Sackowitz Department Store. But people are chiming in. They know the answer of this wonderful architect. You know the answer. Okay, so we're going to get some prizes for y'all. The last question, boy, this is going to be a last one. What's a good one to end on? On so people can win. Are there any questions before we had that final fifth question and before we say goodbye, what are questions that y'all have? Go ahead and put some questions in the comments and then maybe even Alana can read them out if they're questions we think we should know. Are there any questions that you have about the house that maybe we um, didn't get a chance to answer? So give us some questions and we'll be happy to answer them because here's your time. We have live with us Joanne Zumbrum, our board member and wonderful collections committee chair, awesome finance chair as well, caring about the Heritage Society, and then more importantly, a relationship of over 36 years with the organization. She's been here since the early days of this house and knows all about it. So real quick, what questions do y'all have? Alana? Okay, no questions? Well, then we got to ask a final question. What's that big question going to be? What year was this house built? That's a very easy one, okay? And that's going to mean that you probably should know the answer. So that's going to be our final question. You heard it best from our executive director, Allison Bell. So the question is, what year was the house built? It's probably everywhere. You know the answer. Hopefully we got some people chiming in. So I think with, uh, with, with that one last question, a good question. Do we have a question? What's our question, Alana? Can this house be toured? Oh, good question. Good Can the house be toured is the question from one of our awesome viewers. Answer the question. So right now, due to COVID, we are not um, hosting house tours. However, our museum gallery is open. We've got brochures about the house. Our museum is open Wednesdays through Saturdays, 10 to 4. As soon as we get uh, back online with our tours, we will post it on our website and we'll tell you about it on our show. 
You got it. So stay tuned to our weekly show because you're going to hear it first when the, when, the, when the Heritage Society opens up different houses for different tours. And, uh, of course, the museum exhibit is available, which I highly recommend. You will get a VIP tour of the museum from the co-curator herself, the wonderful Ann Sloan is going to be with us on, on August 12th, taking us through Houston's Women's History exhibit that talks specifically about voting rights here in Houston by Houston women. Alana, other question, Alana? Yeah, someone has asked, oh, two questions actually. Did this house originally, is this the original wallpaper in the house? Um, and then the other question is, when you reopen, are you going to show the third floor? Okay, so uh, we probably won't show the third floor when we reopen because it's kind of special just for y'all. That could change, but there really isn't much programming up here. It's kind of, as you can see, used for storage. Uh, so you did get an exclusive chance to see what's up on the third floor, what it actually is, by tuning in. And you can share this video with more people to let them know that was just for you guys. And things could change. They might, maybe we get a, a fake pool table, a phone pool table up here or something to, <laughs> you know, kind of do that. But, but, but uh, Joanne Zimmer, answer the question about wallpaper and about painting the houses. Okay, there is actually no wallpaper in this house, but we, via the, the photos, even though they're black and white, we can analyze them and find out what the original colors were in the uh, different rooms, and we have, as much as possible, utilized those particular colors. You know, that's a great answer, and it's an example of what goes into actually making these houses as authentic as possible. We've had a number of, you know, folks who were in charge of the buildings over the years, probably too many to mention. I know that Emily was probably our last person that focused on the buildings. And what they do is they do just what Joanne mentioned a minute ago. They analyze old photos or... Also, too, we rely on oral history. Folks who maybe lived in the house, uh, descendants of these families, the Pilot family, the Zedai family, the Yates family has been instrumental in donating items over the years. So that's a great example. Another question, Alana? May I add something oh. to that? Uh, <laughs> Okay. Cheers. In in very yeah, thank goodness it didn't go in the glass. In a lot of the older houses too, what we'll, where we don't have any photographs, we actually will scrape through the layers of paint over time to try to find the original paints that were used. And we recently did that in the Kellum Noble House where we did the restoration there and came up with what the, the original colors were actually in the house. Yeah, it's like detective work, and that's just a great example of what it takes to make these houses as authentic as possible because we want to tell a story and we want to tell as accurately as possible. But you out there watching and sharing this video can let us know if there's things that we need to add to it, maybe from your own experiences, your grandparents' experience. Another question, Alana? Yeah, the question was, can you give a walking tour of the grounds and building's exterior during closure? <laughs> well, um, for some reason, the, our park is still closed, and we're not sure um, when it's going to reopen. I'm assuming it's due to COVID. Uh, we, the Parks Department did a wonderful restoration of our buildings from March until the end of May. Um, so it was closed for construction, but it has not reopened. When it does reopen, yes, you can do a walking tour. We have cell phone tours. They're called cell phone. You just take your phone, your smartphone, of course, and you will see a number in front of every house, and you will press that number, and you will get a, um, a taped recording of what's in the house, all the history about the house, so you can definitely see the houses from the outside and learn about them as well, as soon as the park reopens. That is exciting. So there you go. There's a free tour. You can also go to our website, heritagesociety.org, heritagesociety.org, and there's information about the individual houses there. It's brief information, but at least it gives you a starting point for wanting to learn about the house itself. Those are great questions. Thank you so much to Allison Bell, our executive director of Heritage Society. Thank you so much to Joanne Zimmerman, our board member extraordinaire who loves this house. Your members when we first brought it here, and she gave you a great little tour. And more importantly, thank you to you for watching. We really depend on folks to become members of the Heritage Society. As Allison Bell mentioned earlier, it's critical, but more importantly, we want you to love Houston history as much as we do by learning about our great collection here in the houses that we saved and we worked through. So if, if there's no other questions, I think we'll go ahead and sign off. Thank you so much, Houston, for joining Thank us you. and share, the, share Houston history.